Okay, folks, welcome back. This is the second part of session eight. Um, Mr. Models and Expectation Maximization. So we're going to talk about a little bit on how to estimate the parameters of the Mr. Models as um, we have done before in, in another um, chapter, or different um, models, right? Um, so imagine like we start with this mixture of Gaussians and we know that our parameters, uh, theta given the data, this posterior should be a Dirich layer for the uh, categorical parameters, my, P, my pi, and a normal invest wish hard for each of the modes of the experts, right? So my posterior should have this particular shape. Um, now, the thing is that there is one particular problem that appears when we are solving this type of, pro of problems that is unidentifiability. That means that what happens when I cannot identify my parameters because I have multiple solutions of them because the parameters resemble each other. So imagine um, the, following, the following problem. What happens if I have data and this data is distributed accordingly to these uh, two, two modes, right? Let's say like this is uh, a 10 and this happens at minus 10, right? The thing is that if I have these two modes, I can model these, uh, the, my, my mixture of Gaussians with, with, two, with two Gaussians, right? I can use two, two different modes to try to learn these, these representations. So this is my data. Now, what will happen when I'm trying to learn this is that uh, in the parameter space that I'm trying to learn, my likelihood will appear at two different points. So when I have, uh, when one is 10 and when the other one, is minus 10. So let's say like this is mu1 and this is uh, mu2, right? The ones from, from my parameter space that I'm trying to learn. So when when one of them is at, at this point, I will have a really high uh, probability, right? I will have a bump over here. The problem is that I don't know actually which one is which, right? Like I can call this mu1 and I call this mu2. But I can also call this one mu2 and this one mu1. So it doesn't matter which one is which, as long as I learn both of them, right? So what will happen is that I will have another one uh, over here. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I messed up this. So I call this 10, okay. Just for the sake of the drawing, this, this axis will be inverted, my, my mistake, sorry. It should, it, it should be over here and over here. It doesn't matter. So in this other one, we will have a different bump over here, right? Now, the problem with this is that when I'm searching, the space that I'm searching to maximize my parameters is this particular space, right? Assuming that this sigma k is, uh, is fixed, but yeah, forget about it for a second. So when I'm searching in this space, my optimization methods will try to move either up to this mode over here or this one over here. Um, that is the only thing the unidentifiability problem, right? Because how can I identify which is which? And actually, I don't care because either of these modes helps me, right? As long as I find one of these is going to be okay. And that is a difficult problem and that is hard because I have multimodal, um, a multimodal space in the parameter space. I know that this is really different from having a multimodal in the model space on my px given d, because it is fine to have a multimodal uh, likelihood. That, that is like my mixture of Gaussians, right? I will have one bump per, per, per value. What is difficult over here is like, I don't have a way of, of knowing which of those distribution is which. And uh, since I don't know which should I call mu1 or mu2, then my problem gets uh, harder and harder. Um, so finding this optimum is uh, NP hard and we need to find some, some way of, of dealing with this. So that is why uh, try to solving this is, is, is kind of a, a tricky part, okay? So trying to go back and, and um, putting some more uh, closed form into this. So how can we define and find one particular set of parameters? So let's compute the map, okay? So if you remember like the maximum a posteriori is um, me trying to find the likelihood of the theta given the data, right? So 
let's uh, go back with our density. So my likelihood of the data given the, the parameters is uh, a mixture. So I will have all the data points. So I'm going to sum over my data points and the log of my distribution, right? But my distribution, if you remember, is just a sum of different modes, right? So I will have a sum and I will call these modes as uh, CI, just for simplicity. And um, what I have here is my PXI and CI given theta, right? So this is my, my mixture model. Now I have an issue, right? Because I cannot just pass this logarithm through my sums because I can distribute the logarithm with respect of multiplication that we have been doing before, but with respect of sums, this becomes tricky, right? There is not an easy way of doing this. I cannot just distribute my logarithm with respect of the sum without introducing some error. Um, so yeah, that is one, one of the tricky parts that we need to, to think about. And for this shape over here, let's assume that I have some exponential family, one of, of the distributions that we have been using. So let me just put it in a, an exponential family form. So this density over here is one over C beta and exponential of what? Of my theta transpose phi xiz, okay? Know that in here we are extending these to all the variables, right? Before we just have these, uh, just the xi. So this is just an exponential family over here. And now what I wanna do is uh, to try to see what is my, my complete likelihood. So I'm just going to L complete of theta and I'm just going to plug these into, into my, my previous one. So this is the summation of, so when I have the complete data, that means that I won't have this um, uh, weighted sum. In this case, like I'm, I'm just summing through all the, the CIs, right? Because this CI is latent in this case. So I'm going to do something simpler right now. I'm going to just assume like what will happen if I actually have my data. So that is why it is complete, right? So if I know to which CI XI corresponds to. So in that case, I just have the log of this thing over here, right? Because I already know which is the true ZI. So I don't have to do the weighting through all the latent because I already know it. Um, if I apply this over here, then I will end up with theta transpose phi XI CI minus N, because the sum, right? Uh, log of uh, CI. Sorry, C theta. Right. Okay, so now this C theta is convex, so we don't have to worry about it, okay? Now, let's compare it with, with respect to the, to the non-complete one, what happens with this one, right? So the sum of this is uh, the log. Now I cannot, sorry, this is a P, right? I forgot it. So now um, I will do it with respect of the latent one. So I don't have these CIs, right? So it is the sum of the CIs of PXI, CI theta. So this is the, the difference in the likelihood, you see? I cannot just propagate this log through this because um, I have some, some, some limitations over there. So I have my summation of I over the logarithm of summation of CI of my exponential of theta transpose phi xi zi. And um, minus n times log of C theta, right? So as we saw before, like um, it was really easy to um, 
solved before because we have these this exponential and the log they just cancel each other and we have this linear form and it, it is really simple to to optimize that right there right but in here uh it is not that hard either because this is com this is convex since uh our distribution was and we can show that this is also convex okay so you can check the references in the uh in the morpheus book they, they have the reference to, to some papers that prove these these particular shapes so since this is convex and this is convex one will say like oh but then it should be easy to to solve this right but eh, actually it is not and the difference of two convex uh functions is not necessarily convex so it is not necessarily it, is, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be but it may be that it is not okay so but still we can optimize this thing over here and there are a, a, a lot of different ways of doing it we can do some random restarts so that means like we just select some initialization parameters and just run through it uh, we can do local search for instance simulated annealing genetic algorithms beam search whatever search that you want to try to solve this unidentifiability problem and some other different algorithms like iterative algorithms and that's what we will talk next expectation maximization can help us to try to solve these issues and the important uh, takeaway from this is that you don't need to just show non-convex problems okay some of them will have some solutions and they are really really useful okay see you in the next part